Right. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Camilo Sanchez. Uh, I'm going to present a bit of experiments that I've been doing in Audisonics with digital uh, feedback. I come from Alto Media Lab. Uh, I've been an assistant research in the sound and physical interaction research group there. And I did one, uh, one year exchange here in the music technology department. Um, well, a quick introduction to Ambisonics is a 3D recording playback method for sound field synthesis. Uh, I don't know how familiar are you with Ambisonics, but it works in the way that it captures the sound field. Well, it depends on the microphones and the order, but basically for four directions this way. So it takes like front left up, uh, front right up, uh, um, back, right down, back, left, down. And then there's different orders. Zero order will be like omnidirectional, full sphere. First order would be like four spheres. And then it can go like theoretically up to an infinite uh, order. But I, I've seen people use it up to seven order. And I've heard there's uh, some people in Zurich using 11th order. I would like to, to hear that in real life because that, that would be very impressive. So what, why Ambisonics is interesting? It's because it, it offers flexible setups. For example, I can be working on an Ambisonic project. And then at home, I just work with my headphones, binaural. But then I can go to that place in Zurich and I just put uh, a decoder to the 11th order that they have. And, and I just have to change one line in my code. Uh, but also, like, if, if I have just a um, home studio with four speakers, then I can get also a surround effect that is fair enough for just four speakers. But then artistically, uh, it also offers this beamforming, so you can choose, like, different microphone patterns of how the sound is captured. You can choose uh, if they are like um, um, eight figure eight mics, if they are omnipresent mics, if they are like cardio mics. So you can play how the sound is captured, rather uh, digitally or when it was acoustic uh, sound. And then, of course, the spatial transformations, that's why we are using multi-channel speakers is to move the sound around. So in this, compared to other systems that are on amplitude based, um, we, they are just like changing the amplitudes up and down from the speakers. Then Ambisonic uses phases, and that allows to have these effects that okay, the sound is tilting or the, or the sound is being pushed, you know, Instead of just like, no, it's racing from the back speakers, it's like, no, there's like this wall here, and the sound is just behind this wall. Uh, this is important. Uh, Ambisonics have some uh, different formats. The format is when you record the sound with your microphone, or sort of the source sound, that's called A format. Uh, different Ambisonic mics. Uh, have different capsules, so that's why I wrote there that it's microphone dependent. And then the B format is when you have the ambisonic signal, when you go to the ambisonic feedback, uh, signal, and then you can do all these transformations, pushing, pressing the sound field towards somewhere. Uh, for my example, I'm going to work with first order ambisonics uh, in the format of Puma. There is different uh, conventions. Another convention is the the one that uses Ambix, which is WYZX. Um, but basically, you can see here what basic, what of these channels does. And then finally, this is how you hear the sound. This is like your decoding format in a way, the big format. Uh, so. I, I've done this experiment in Super Collider, uh, and I've done it in Super Collider because Super Collider has uh, this a block size of, of one, which is uh, sample accurate block size. 
I think Chuck uh, has also the sample operate block size. There is one speaker here working with Chuck. Yeah, so yes. you can I will confirm. Show Chuck this stuff. Yeah, so, so this you can confirm that. Well, my question with people working with Max or Pure Data will be like if that's that's possible there because at least I think yeah it is. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I, it's uh, painful, but it's possible. Okay. <laughs> so maybe maybe you could also try that if it is possible. So the Amazonic Toolkit in Super Collider was developed by uh, Joseph Anderson and Joshua Parmenter. And uh, one of the things that they say is that uh, when you are working with Ambisonics, if you want to apply effects, the best way is to actually hold the encode to, to the B format, then you decode again to the A format. Then you apply the effects, and then you decode again to the B format to do the spatial transformations. And I, I was thinking, like, uh, why is that so important? But then, when I've been doing these experiments, I noticed that, yeah, if, if you apply the effects or the processing, meanwhile, the signal is in B format. It, it does change the, um, how the sound feels, the, and also the transformations are a bit different. So if you want to keep the transformations that you've been working on, then it's better to, to apply the effects on the A format and then back to the B format. So I'm going to show that, and then how to do digital feedback in Super Collider uh, to use this uh, options of block size of one, and then these ones, these UG engines are your scene. Now, I'm going to move uh, to Super Collider, but um, it's, you need to know Super Collider, but I guess most of you do. Uh, but really simple stuff. Uh, this is just to say that uh, I'm going to use four channels and uh, this is feedback. Here is a sample of one. And then I'm going to choose my Ambisonic decoder, which is like four channels. Uh, my B to A decoder, which is decode from B format to A format. And then I'm, I'm going to encode a four channel signal. So I choose this <coughs> encoder, which is basically like a virtual encoder that takes uh, if the microphones were in a, in a normal Ambisonic array. Of up, down, or front, up, front, front, down, uh, right, up, front, left, up, front, left, down, right, uh, right, front, down, right, front, uh, up. And then a two PV color. I'm going to skip the sample for later. So then uh, I'm going to play first the source. Uh, And I'm gonna turn these to second one just in case. So this is this is my source. Each channel right now is giving one one frequency. Now I'm gonna play the uh, ambisonic signal without any transformation. So you still hear the signal, but now it's, uh, each speaker is playing like the four frequencies, but they've been spread among the... So it's, it's not that harsh as it was before, it was just like... So now let, we can apply some transformations on the, on the signal. So now this is just the signal moving around. I'm gonna turn the volume up a bit if that's fine. This is the signal just moving around. Uh, but then, what if we apply feedback to the signal when it's moving around? And, and that's the, the thing that I felt like. Yeah, you can apply feedback in many ways. You can. Uh, feedback the effects, uh, but maybe you want to feedback 
the signal when it's moving around. That, that would be like the interesting thing to do with ambisonics, I thought. Uh, so maybe we can try that. So right now they, it has some uh, some oscillators also in the effect, but I'm, I'm going to remove them for more clarity. It's really, ambisonics is really useful when you want to make these spatial transformations. But applying effects, uh, effect change in the, in the ambisonic change, it's already quite interesting because it uh, makes uh, this effect have some depth. Um, so that's something to try out. And well, here's a delay, but you can try with, uh, for example, reverb or distortion. But then, like if, if on top of that you apply a uh, feedback change, that that even becomes more interesting. So, good idea would be to try out, like for example, several feedback chains or different effects, uh, different sources. I was trying actually with noise with that. You can do that as well. And one thing also to take into consideration is that uh, the, the decode, encoders that we use to get the signal matters a lot because it's what selects like the type of beam that is capturing the sound source. Uh, so if I now change the encoder to a different one, it's 
it has a it, it has a slight difference because the the microphone patterns that each each encoder uses. So there is different ways to use ambisonic uh, use ambisonics to in an artistic way. It's not just to move a space in VR, but also to create art with, with ambisonics. So, so that was the the whole core of this presentation. I'm just gonna play one more example. I think when when it is a sample, it does it. Um, you cannot hear the effect that much, but it still still work. So I'm just gonna load this sample. So you can hear there is some voices, but there is a bit of these echoes that come from the feedback. And of course the delay that is applied, but um, that comes from the feedback chain here. But yeah, in, in my opinion, it works better when it's just synthesis instead of samples. This was a sample taken in Contula. Uh, I, did, I, I guess you already know that there is Contula Electronic happening this weekend. So I invite you to go there. It starts tomorrow and it goes until s Sunday. So please come. Um, I'll be presenting on, on Saturday with uh, Ardia So. This is always at 2 o'clock in the swimming pool. Thanks. Yeah. But maybe this is of interest for others as well. Yeah, yeah, sure. So what I see is that there is a signal source going in, that is the input source there, yeah. that was white noise at some point. Yeah. Then you do the encoding. Yes, exactly, here. And then you do some processing on the encoding. And no, no, then yeah. you then you decode. Okay, so I encode and decode? Yeah. You encode first, Yeah. so you get like your signals coming from the sound yeah. field. And then what it does, because before you encode, your signals are coming in a, from different spaces, so it comes from different directions. Uh -huh. And then when you encode, <coughs> uh, the signal is not anymore uh, thought as four different audio channels, but they are four different um, directions. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. This, uh, this, this, this channels with properties. So the first channel, what it does is it has the whole pressure of the whole sound field with uh, <coughs> equal gain. Mm -hmm. And then the other three channels, they have different directions with different pressure or gains. So then when you decode, you don't have any more the same uh, uh, sort of spatial uh, properties here. But the, now the array is, has become like this. Um, whole uh, omnisphere and then the other three channels. Then you apply the effects and then you can like uh, put back to the encoding, uh, uh, ambisonic encoding. I can, so so I, do, I do encode the mono signal into this B format, yeah. right? Then the B format into the A format, yeah. then I do the processing, then A to B again. Yeah, so, so I'm back in B format. Yeah, you're back in B format to transform the signal yeah. around and keep yeah. your process, your uh, impact. Yeah. So your, in this case, delay or reverb, yeah. it stays intact because yeah. you did it on the A format. So after the processing, I move the things around. That, that's yeah. the transformation, right? Yeah. yeah, in B format. Yes. Then I here I did the feedback. To do the feedback, I come back to A format which is this 
B2 A decoder for feedback. Yeah. Then I apply the feedback with its own processing signal and then back to A format, uh, back to B format to decode. So there's like two. Okay. You can actually, you can skip this part. This is just because uh, I was applying uh, effect chain on Ambisonic, but this whole part, you can remove it. And if I remove it, then we have uh, encoder, transformer, and this should be encoder. Yeah. But the uh, feedback is there. So the feedback that we, we hear now is at, at this kick, the, or the, the, the after yeah. thing, the feedback yeah. basically. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, that, that sort of this step was just like another effect chain, mm -hmm. but you can just take it out. And then, uh, yeah. So, and, and what makes it interesting is actually that you, when you move it around, the feedback is applied on different sides, and that creates exactly. this kind of strange and ambient. Uh, yeah, that's the whole thing. It yeah. creates this deep depth. Yeah. Um, that's how I feel it. That okay. there is different layers of uh, effects going around the sound field. Thank you. Sure. Yes. Um, sorry. Oh, so you you with us? Um, just related to this code example, how relevant is it that it is a single sample feedback? Because now it seems to me you have a delay C here, a process signal for feedback. Yeah. And you have delay C, and you have then uh, the four different delays in times which are above, uh, above uh, default block size. So in this case, you could also do it without single sample feedback, or is it wrong? Uh, because, because here there is no short feedback. You have a minimum feedback of uh, 10 milliseconds. Yeah. Yeah, here. So you have a minimum delay of 10 milliseconds, so, um, yeah. But why do you need the single sample feedback? Mm. Well, yeah, you would have yeah. needed it in the other part, which you have deleted before, was it, right? Because there uh, was a mix uh, of the... What was the default? I uh, think I had Here you had a mix of process signals. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Multiply by half. They are uh, this uh, 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 1.5 milliseconds is the uh, 1.45 milliseconds is the yeah and here you have a mix with a B to A decoder yeah and so here there is a difference with single sample feedback but if you delete it you could do it without single sample feedback also mm. or if um, if I delete this one no the other one know. if you delete the one that's row 55 line 55 if you delete yeah. that. This one. Then you wouldn't need the single sample feedback. Yeah, but then you have mm. to, to subtract the, um, the delay time. Yes, you would have to. The sample, the sample, right. the block size. Yeah. Yeah. Block size. It, might make, it might make a difference. I mean, yes, it, would, it would make a difference, for sure. Uh, yeah. Should we try? <laughs> you can try. Yeah, I, I mean, so I don't want to delay that. <laughs> 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 We don't want to delay the delay. <laughs> yeah. But it would be just deleting that. And up. It's easy to try out. And it's, it's good. Because I didn't take that into consideration. So that's a good comment. So this is with the accurate sample rate. Mm -hmm. And then we try with the normal sample rate which is 64 by default. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but then you would have to subtract so to subtract uh, within the delay C yeah. from this times you would have to subtract uh, as you mentioned uh, the 64 uh, the, uh, the, what is it the control 
duration. Yes. yes. Hmm. But uh, anyway. So. But yeah, yeah. It's something that I didn't think maybe would. Yeah. But it, 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 I can imagine that it makes a lot of difference in, in several examples. Yeah, you're... probably in other examples. Yeah. 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 Any more questions? We're at the back. Some was it? No, it was the same. Oh, it's the same. Uh, so, what was the feedback? I mean, what was the signal of the uh, It was the the whole thing <coughs> after here. So. The signal from the input source, then the effect chain, then the transformation, then that gets feedback back when it goes to the transformer. But it's just sent back to the input. Ah, it goes back to the input of the transformer. It's like a conflict. Uh, sounds like it. Uh, but I probably it's also because of the effect. There is two delay effects. Uh, the more sources, the sorting possibility is. Is that what you asked me? Or at the more, what's the actual yeah, In your case, like it was controlling another parameter, it wasn't just some back to the input. The system. I was wondering if oh, the, feed, the feedback, the, the output signal was the controlling some other parameter, or if it was just some back. No, it goes back, it just goes back to the transformer input. Yeah, it doesn't control mm -hmm. the parameter. Okay, thank you very much.